Hey everybody, it's Booksy. I am recording on Thursday, December 16th for AMC Stock. I actually recorded a one hour video <laughs> and decided that uh, I didn't want to upload it. I noticed that the average watch time for videos almost never exceeds like 20 minutes and I respect that. I don't want to waste your time. I, I really, really wanted to go into some detail on some things. Um, but what I'm going to do is save it for like different videos. And I'm just going to focus on just the update for this video on what happened today. So what you're seeing here is a very odd graph. Um, but this is what happened today, right in this region. And uh, essentially, we started the day with with a, a quick run and then it just sort of sold off um, into what I call the spring uh, this afternoon. And then we got a spring up and uh, retested the top of the region, came back down, did the same sort of thing again. And we really just sort of rattled right around this uh, 2445, 2447 level that I've uh, say can't seem to get away from. Um, and, you know, the, the thing is, is that we were going into today's expecting a t-test. And the t-test, for those that don't know, um, they're just the name that I gave to these accumulation zones that we see on AMC. There's nothing really like hyper special about it. Um, they're on each of the major fractals. Kind of have to ignore all these lines. We'll get to them. T1, T2, T3. And T1 looks like a volcano. T2 looks like a mountain with another little peak. Uh, it's like twin mountains. And then the T3 looks like a cup and a handle that's formed off the side of this mountain. And Typically, this breaks to the upside. This is our big breakout move right on this stock. Um, but of recently, of recent days, we've noticed that um, it actually doesn't, it's not been breaking to the upside uh, every time, whereas in the past, like that's been the way that it's moved. Uh, it, it didn't happen in November. So something changed in November. And ever since then, the fractal has changed a little bit too because the fractal, the microfractal, these things up here, they represent the way that the stock is being traded. So it doesn't matter if the algorithm is fixed or if it's flexible or if it's more than one thing, the reason that it looks the same is because it's the way that it's being traded, all right? And so the reason it repeats and it iterates and all these other things, yes, somebody's programmed it in there to look a certain way, but the main thing is that um, it's gonna continue to be traded that same way on every level, all right? So that's fractal basics. Uh, and you're gonna get a handful of mind-boggling <laughs> things today. Um, so this fractal right here is the way that we're currently seeing it play out if we see the fractal appear in our charts. Um, today, we saw it appear once in this region. We'll get to that. And then twice, if you look at this whole region. And then if you zoom out, just to look at the last few days, the last week or so, um, this whole region is, is a macro fractal as well. And you can see it. And it's funny, it actually looks like somebody took this fractal and put it on like a, a road. It's like, see you later, AMC. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> it's just like walking away. Um, isn't that weird? But it... Another way to think about it is it's like on a ribbon or it's just like on an arc, um, but it's not it's not like normal, right? Like we don't normally see this fractal stretch like this in this particular shape. It's very odd. And I know you could cry foul and say like, well, Booksy, you put those there. I mean, they didn't exist, but I just saw it. All right, I saw it. I've been playing with curves a lot and I've noticed that Bezier curves are much more reliable when repeating patterns on AMC because they're infinitely scalable. And so unlike like a box, for instance, right, which can be stretched and squashed, a curve, if you have the curve set um, and you've identified it, it can be very, very reliable. So like, for instance, there's a pattern right here with curves that's very significant. And it's a pattern that I want to explore with you more in a different video. I'm not going to go into it in too much detail on this video, but I'll show you what I mean really quick. So there's this curve 
You see it, and it appears on the this particular part of the fractal, which is like a bridge from the T1 to the T2 mountain. And it, it obeys the rules of the curve, where it passes through the 618. If you draw from the bottom of the T-test to the top of this, it obeys this Bezier curve. And you might be thinking, well, like, how did you make that curve? Well, a Bezier curve has an anchor, and then it has these little uh, weighted points that you can drag, and it manipulates this. And this is a mathematical curve, so it's parabolic. So the slope increases and decreases as you move along it. Um, and you could also think about it as like circles intersecting, right? But the point is, is that the bottom part of the curve and the top part of the curve have the same mathematical formula. So you see like how this arc arcs the same way on this side as it does this way, it's just opposite, right? Very interesting. Okay, very interesting. So I'm not saying that that means that everything is quote unquote predestined, but I do think that it means that when you're at the bottom and let's say you could figure out a way to use speed lines to estimate a top that you potentially could draw these curves and have a pretty accurate idea of because you could use the fibonacci right you could have an accurate idea of how it's going to traverse this region um, which again is predictive another thing i noticed is that there's a secondary curve in here and that secondary curve uh, does some really interesting things with the R1 fractal. You see how this R1 fractal passed through this yellow curve and then comes back over? Because remember, like this is the one I showed you earlier, and then this is a bigger one on the sequence. And I've found that you can do the same thing with the macro here. Check that out. Look at that. Isn't that cool? It's the same. And you see how once this touched the curve, it didn't actually come down to the 618. It just didn't. Um, not the way that it was drawn here, right? It didn't actually come down to the 618. It only came to this curve. And this could explain, possibly, why this didn't actually come all the way down to the top of this point right here. Um, I'm not saying that for sure, because obviously just eyeballing these things, I can't draw it mathematically just yet. So everything I said just now, <laughs> it's all being worked on. I can't say for sure it's this or that. Um, and then also like for these kinds of regions, I'm not sure if I should chart up here or what, but it's really fascinating. Um, and I'm yeah, I mean, they're just all over the place. And then I'm also noticing that well, I don't want to get into this right now, but basically like how to measure these, I'm trying to figure out how to measure these moves, these top moves from the base so that we can go and we can measure the macro move and figure out like actually really good price targets and not not based on the first move and the second move. I know that's like the impulse stuff where you're talking about like Elliott Wave and, and whatever. And yeah, those extensions often work, but in this fractal, um, the last move, just like an L8 wave, is weakest, and it tends to kind of ride up sideways up on this arc. That's just the way that it moves. You see this? Now, this one actually is pretty pretty substantial. Um, but the, see how these ones, like, this is the first move, and then this is the second, third move. See how it just kind of ekes up? All right. I'll do another video on this. I don't want to get into it all right now, but... Um, yeah, same deal with here. See how this one, this is the one we showed earlier. It breaks down and then it kind of just, after it breaks this range, it doesn't go much higher. So the point is I'm trying to figure out ways of like measuring moves and I'm using curves a lot um, in the stock because it's, it's infinitely scalable. It makes sense to me. And it also seems to obey a lot of different rules on the stock. So coming back to this, I noticed these curves today and it was more or less towards the end of the, end of the day. Uh, and so I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to do a predictive move based on what I'm seeing here. So if you look at this region, um, we're, where we are essentially, I, I need the comparison. I don't know why I just turned it off. You see this purple marker? We're basically right here. Right? We're, we're coming off that. So the expectation would be we we're going to start dropping tomorrow. Now, I know that you're thinking, well, Booksy, you said 
that we were in the T3. And I kind of think we are, and I kind of think we aren't. Um, here's, where, here's where I'm going with this. The whole point of the T-test is to set up for a big move. But if the way that the stock is being traded from here forward in this region, if the way that it's being traded here forward is that you're going to have this dip as part of the fractal, then the fractal in some regards has changed. It's no longer T1, T2, T3 that break out. It's T1, T2, T3, oh, we need more liquidity. We're going to do this dip. So it's going to iterate based on where we are, right? So that the fractal in some ways has changed. Now, if I'm looking at this zone right here, it's not applicable because it didn't happen here. So everything up to that point, it, it follows the same basic rules. But after November, it's been, instead of doing like T1, T2, T3, and then move, T1, T2, T3, set up for the R1 move, it's been doing T1, T2, T3, terminal spring, then move. And there's evidence of that today, even. So you see the big one here, right? I've identified we're in this region. Um, now let's zoom in. Zoom and enhance. You can't do that with pixels. That's not a thing. They always tell you, they always make it seem like you can, but you can't do that. Um, <laughs> trust me, you get all blocky stuff because uh, you can't create the data, but you can zoom and enhance Bezier and it'll never change because it's based on math formulas. Um, so look at this. This is the walk down, right? After we had the main fractal workout. All right, so this is the beginning of the fractal. I know it's kind of weird looking, but this is that run that I've pointed out on Twitter. I'm not going to go through the pre-market stuff. This is basically what, what the pre-market showed us, that it was going to happen. Um, and it did look like it was just going to cascade down, and it didn't show much else. It showed this. So this should be very encouraging to you because what this means is this means that, and this is the last little bit here. This means that, um, or it could be this region. It doesn't really matter. See these little four points? Like this region right here. What this means to us is that the end result of this fractal, and I've seen it more than once. This isn't the only place I've seen it. Okay. Um, but the end result of this fractal is to get that liquidity test. And it's just really interesting. So at this point, it's not exactly the same setup as the head and shoulder, but it's very similar. You still get a uh, a weird looking head and shoulder here. Um, and I know that looks really bizarre, but uh, just trust me. <laughs> but you see this right here, All right? This could be giving us a glimpse of what might happen in the future. So this, this was the fractal that I tracked that goes from literally like beginning to end, and then it does this at the end. So it's an indication to me that this is a reaccumulation fractal Right, and that the end result of this fractal will be to break. And this is sort of conditioning, I think, uh, institutions and whoever's trading this to understand like this is the way this fractal is going to play out. Um, and I know that that's taking a big risk because I'm saying, you know, predictably, this is how it's going to break out. But I took this fractal here, and I want you to notice there's this zone down here that was supported. Right, based on this curve, this curve was only established because it was like the bounding box for the trading range. So it, it's comparable to like something like this, like a flat line. It's not arced, but it's it's still a support, right? And it 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 tried to break into this liquidity zone one two times, and when it did break, it like retreats really fast. And we see something similar, right, on our chart today and this week, which is we see that we also have a zone like that right here. Now, that being said, there is evidence to the downside. We'll get to that. And it's good evidence. Uh, I'm just not convinced it's going to be as far as everyone says it is. And if it is, it'll be probably on a gap down again. And I'll tell you why I think that or it'll be just like a really brutal battle 
<laughs> in one region for like more than a day or something. All right, so after it does that, it bounces all right, out of that region, comes back, retests it, and then goes again. Pretty classic like accumulation stuff down here, right? Very similar to what we're experiencing right now on the macro or medium term level. So I took this fractal um, and I just put it up here. And guess what? If you put the fractal up here, and I didn't really mess with it too much. I think I just squished it. Because like, yeah, like this could do this, right? That'd be fun. <laughs> you want to wait until February to be back at $52? Um, man, that'd be, that'd be, be a long wait. Uh, but yeah, they could do this. I mean, this is definitely possible. So with fractals, you can, you can obviously squeeze them and stretch them. So this puts us down at like $20. But I don't think it's going to be like that. And the reason is because um, this is the... And by the way, this move doesn't have to be proportional to, the, to this move on a fractal. I'm just going to point out that, yeah, it could be like that. And then this could be like way down here, right? And retreat really quickly in this zone. This is a possibility if it gets like stuck in this zone. It's a bearish possibility, okay? That we, we hit like $20, we get enough liquidity, and then we just bust out um, from low down here. But I also think it could happen a lot sooner than that based on a few other things. I think it could be pretty quick. So this creates an inverse uh, head and shoulder pattern, right? Which is what we've been talking about. So even though it's very odd, right? To think about it in these terms, um, because we're like, hey, that's not the T1, or the, excuse me, the T3 that we've been talking about. But look, look at the similarities in this breakout pattern. Okay, this is the breakout pattern from just over here, um, pre-June. And I know that everybody's talking about January. It's very similar as well. But just look at the similarities of it, okay? Very interesting. The difference is that you have a very different kind of bottom on this one. It's not this like V-shaped point, which is kind of what was happening here, okay? Where we're squeezing up and out of here. There's still a case you could make that that's possibility. I know it doesn't seem like it because we're kind of turned on our side here, um, but there's a possibility that because I'm you know I'm charting it, um, and I know that it's turned down right now, but uh, these regions have this very bizarre pattern here where they kind of come out and they sort of flatten a bit right before they move. So it's still a possibility that this just moves from here, but I don't think it's going to do that because I think it's going to follow the fractal pattern, okay? So let's get back to it. Last little bit here, we're going to do some weird fractal stuff. If you look at the macro, right, this is the whole fractal, the next thing that would be coming up would be the move down, which we know is at least a one and a two. Could be three but it's at least a one and a two. It's missing the third part right here. So I was looking at these fractals and I found that today you had this full fractal right here that ended in a spring. But then if you look at the whole day, it's actually this, the same thing as well, right? It's another, so we have a fractal within a fractal within a fractal right now. Perfect example of why fractals are hair splitting at times. Um, but they're also just really interesting. So this is the fractal. And same deal, all right? Now this, you might say like, well, that wasn't a terminal spring. But if you look at where it was, it did go below maybe what would later be called like the trading zone. And arguably, like this is another little spring that happened over here. But this was the, the trading range that we talked about a lot. Like it was going to be basically like below this region, something like that, that would cause, you know, us to drop further. So we're facing another one of those right now, I believe. And if we hold it, I don't think we're going to have to drop further. That's an if question. So... Anyways, where are we in this one? Well, in this fractal, I tracked us to right here. 
these are the, the two regions. You see this yellow region right here? So on the macro, just to re repeat it so you don't get too lost, on the macro, the bigger one here, and this isn't even a macro, it's still a micro, but you get the point. This is where we are. But on the daily, or on the daily, on the smaller time frame, um, this region correlates to this region, which means that this, all right, is actually like over here. So where we are on the smaller time frame is over here. Now that might be a little confusing and you might be like, well, how do you reconcile the two, Booksy? I don't have to because fractals do it themselves. <laughs> What's the next move? Look at this. What's the next move on the yellow? The next move on the yellow is up, right? Okay. What's the next move? It's an up move, right? But it's a small up move because we're looking at a micro time frame. Small up move. But it's going to look something like this, going this way. What's the next one on the next level, on the purple? Well, right here. What's the next one? Up. All right, an up move, a little up move. So that little up move completes, it completes this on the micro, and then it also completes this little move on the macro. And then what you're gonna have is basically just a crazy sell-off, right? Um, and it, it should look something like what we have over here. So in order for me to get these arcs, I did some weird geometry crap <laughs> that didn't even matter. Um, I took like a, and I'm sorry if I say crap and you, you got kids around, I apologize. Um, but I, I took a, uh, where is it? Come on. It's making me look super, super competent here. All right. I, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think it could be fib circles or something like that, but I just took a, uh, that's not what it was. Come on. This one. All right. All I did was I used this like a. Um, I went. I measured to like the edge of the the curve there, and then I took a line and I just drew a line, like a tangent. A tangent is just a line that, that only touches once, like right at this point. And then I measured because it should work out, right? If it's mathematically correct. Uh oh. Don't freeze on me. Uh, it should work out because it would be like a triangle. So you could then rotate that triangle on the circle. So then I took this and I rotated it down um, to create the tangent again. So I'm looking like over here. And then I just took this move, moved it down. So it's basically like using a compass and the irony being that I was really bad at geometry in school. Um, I really like statistics, which you probably all could like figure out. Yeah. So yeah, I don't remember exactly what I did there. I think I just swung it over again. <laughs> it could be really diagonal, um, but you can see like basically where it landed is it lands on the, and so I did all that craziness, these like shenanigans, right? Uh, I did all this craziness, and then I just went, and this will this will make you really. You're either gonna roll your eyes or you're gonna just like giggle, but maybe you'll do both, or maybe you'll just be like, "Oh, this guy." Um, I took a Fibonacci and just did a Fibonacci. I was like, oh, "I wonder what it is to the top of this move," and it ends up being like the six one eight, which of course is the level that AMC loves to come back to, and specifically on these fractals, we've been talking that about that a lot. Like it comes back to the 618. That's how I measure this this silly little pink line, this 24, 25 level that I've been talking about forever um, was a 618 level. So, all right. So this is a measured move down to the 618. Makes sense. 60% 60, 60 drop um, after you, you move up or from the top, right? Uh, this would make sense to me. It, it fills both this fractal right here and this, it can, you know, it reflects this fractal that we saw and it would finish this fractal, the littler one. So it finishes a lot of different things at once. Um, so from there, like, what would I expect to have happen? Well, 
I think it's really simple. I'm not going to make it more complicated than this at this point. Is that I think that this right here is going to be a tough bottom for them to push through. I think it's a liquidity zone. Um, it's got like three touch points right here. This is the area that we had fractal iteration, remember? Which means that they had to like push it down by iterating and iterating and iterating. And the same thing happened here, right? Because remember, each of these areas between the t-tests is those little iterations. This one was pretty mild, right? Because this is this is basically just the fractal of reaccumulation. And I would venture that this is as well. But you have that iteration that happens here. We've been talking about that for the last like week um, or so. So in order for them to like get it down to these levels, they had to iterate down. And then take that into consideration and then consider that the only time they got below this level is when they gapped down overnight and they put a lot of volume in overnight to push it all the way down to get that touch point. It's almost as if touching this causes us to spring off <laughs> and it's like a deflecting zone. So I think there's uh, the bulls are taking a stand here in this region. And I think that you're getting a lot of buys here. And remember, this was like that huge volume day. Okay. People gobbled this up in this region. So I think this is the new liquidity zone. And I think that what you're looking at is like in order to get through that, you'd have to like push through it. You'd have to iterate all the way down through it, like hardcore. And it's going to take some time. And the only other way that I can think that you could do it is like a gap, just like they did over here. So I think after this, what happens next? Well, on the fractal, the macro fractal, the next thing that should happen is the move up. Unless there's, there's something I'm missing and there's going to be this other move down, right? We'll, we'll study it. This is a really good study for us uh, tomorrow. But I really do think that you know, the next move is going to be out of there. I think if they do push it down, it's going to get down there, maybe drop a little bit, maybe to this 2187, and that's going to be like the more or less official spring. Um, this is my thought. I know that everyone else is calling for the wedge to just be filled out, the bigger wedge, if you go back way out on the, the other time frame. Um, there are, there is like a macro wedge, but I think that. I just think it's a falling wedge, but I think that the it, it could break here. Like it doesn't have to break way down low just because. Look, I turned off the red just so you could see like the volume has been drying out a bit as we go down this fractal, but it, it did the same thing. Uh oh. I knew this was going to break. Stack error. Ah, uh, come on. All right, look. Um, this is this is all like crazy stuff. Just look at this candle. You think that we get back to that zone, it's not going to happen again. Like unless they gap us down again, it's not going to be easy. Like they're going to have to push hard. I really do think they're going to push us down to like that twenty-two level, and it's just going to go. That's going to be like the last leg down. I really do believe that. And I think that after that point, you're looking at breaking out, getting the head and shoulders and moving. And I know that I've been talking about these T, these T tests and it's frustrating because I was saying like, oh, we're going to get the T3, but the volume wasn't there. It went flat. And I think the reason it went kind of flat was because it's so broken. I had too much stuff going on in that chart. Um, man, I really wanted that chart. Oh well, um, because we were we were playing out that fractal, and that's the same thing that happened on the macro is that we we lost volume as we went along, and that's why it does the because it doesn't want to break out at the T three anymore, and that's what I'm saying it changed, and so you get that 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 terminal spring call it that. I think it'll try to get below this region right here. Um, maybe you could argue that maybe 
uh, it needs to go further down. But if this is kind of like the measured move from, let's say, July, or not July, but from January, again, it's the same deal. Like, it's the same FIB levels. All right, and we didn't retrace all the way back down. Well, I guess we kind of did. We almost retraced all the way back down <laughs> to this area. Um, but I think you're talking about this being on an arc. It's just different. It's not the same. Um, I don't think it has to be all the way, all or nothing, right? So I think you're going to get down to this region, this really tough get through liquidity zone, that, that the 618 here. And then I think if they push in a little bit, like maybe we'll see those 22, 21s. If, it, if it's blood red tomorrow and I'm like completely wrong, then my expectation would be that it's going to whip out really fast again. And that's what we need. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know um got a little weird at the end there, but um, I really don't see the need. And I know that people are saying because of Wyckoff and because of this and that, but I really see this as like a protected zone down here. Uh, I just think it's really weird. You know, they didn't, they couldn't get through it in regular trading hours. Um, so to me, it's not, it's not an easy push down from there. There's something is protecting it. That's where people are buying, right? It's the new accumulation zone. And that to me is where you're going to see like the spring happen again. Um, and then once we get over this trading range around 25, then we're going to start seeing those pushes up that we've been talking about. But could this thing go down and then coast sideways? Well, I think if it hits this value down here at 22 and goes flat on Friday, then, you know, Monday, it could be much the same, just kind of bouncing around on it until it's ready. It's just going to iterate this region, basically, because it's that's the spring region. <laughs> so we'll see this play out, but we'll see it play out on like a micro level. Things are getting really weird on this stock really fast because of all this accumulation and junk that they're doing. So like on a micro level, you'll see like all of this play out. Um, so this is what I meant when I said like I could see them dropping it down and then basically just doing this nonsense tomorrow. And like maybe you get this spring um, that looks like this on like a gap for Monday or something. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, let's go back up. Uh, and then we just kind of move up from there. I don't know. Um, that's all speculative stuff. But you will see this fractal play out on a lower level if we move down. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you all have a good one and we'll see you tomorrow.